we saw what are classes and how we can create objects from those classes, what is inherited and how can we inherit, so on and so forth. We saw that these classes have these properties that we add here and that we can later on manipulate these properties when we create objects out of these classes. So we have our player class right here. We have the power, health, and name as properties, which we are setting here in our constructor. If I go here in my script and if I create here the player object, so if I type player p1 is equal to new player, so new player, we are going to create an object from this player and now we are going to initialize all of these variables in the constructor and we can use these variables. The problem is that these variables are private. We have visibility modifiers, public and private. If we don't type anything here by default, they are private. That means that these variables cannot be accessed outside of this class. If I type here p1.health, I cannot access the health variable from this myscript class. If I make it public, so if I type here public int power, and I go here and type p1 power is equal to, let's say 100, now I will be able to manipulate this power variable, which is, well, right here from this class. If it's public, or excuse me, if it's private like this, now I will not be able to do so. And we see that this variable has gone red, indicating that we have a problem. If I go here in my Unity editor, we will see that power is inaccess inaccessible, excuse me, due to its protection level. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, the general rule when we create these variables is to put them all to be private. So all of these need to be private. And if we need to manipulate these variables, if we need this power variable to be accessible in other scripts, we need to provide a getter and a setter. And those are functions that we create to manipulate these variables. So for example, for our power, which is at the moment private, and we cannot access it, we can create a public void set power. And here we can set the power variable. We also need to pro provide, excuse me, an argument, which I'm going to call also power. And if we want to manipulate this one, I'm going to type here, this dot power is equal to power. Now, don't be confused. I will explain what is going on here. This refers to this class. So this keyword refers to the class where we write this keyword, meaning in this case to the player class. This dot power refers to this variable right here that we have declared. So the power in this case will refer to this variable that we have declared on top of the class. And this power variable right here refers to this one right here. In order to make this more clear, I'm going to type here A and here A, and now everything is crystal clear. Meaning that we are setting this power right here to be equal to A or this parameter that we pass here. If we pass here 100, our power will be equal to 100. If we pass 200, it will be equal to 200, so on and so forth. The same way we need to provide a getter. So here we are going to type public int get power. And this one is simply going to return the power. So we are going to type return this dot power. Again, this keyword refers to the class itself, meaning the player class and its variable that is right here. Since this here is clear, which I believe, I can return here power and here also power. So this dot power refers to this variable right here and it's equal to power, meaning this variable. So this one right here refers to this variable here. And the same way here, this dot power refers to this variable or the power that we have declared on top of the class. In order to demonstrate how this actually works, we are going to go here and we see that in our constructor, we are setting the power to be equal to 100. If I go here and create our player object from our player class, I'm going to type 
debug.log and I'm simply going to type here the power is and I'm going to type plus p one dot get power and this will return the power because we are setting the power to be equal to 100. This get power will return that variable and we are going to see in the console that power is 100. So let's see if I'm actually right. If I run the game, we are going to see the power is 100. Let us change that. If I go here, we see that we have provided a setter which can manipulate this variable right here. Anything that we pass in our setter will be declared or it will be provided and set to this variable right here because we type this power is equal to power. Let's test that out. Here we are typing the power is and we will print that, print that in the console. Now I'm going to type p1 set power and let's say the power is now 56. And again, I'm going to type the power is and in the first print, we are going to see that the power is equal to 100. That is because in our constructor, we are setting the power to be equal to 100. But after that, we are changing the power using set power to 56, which will set the power here. And I have already explained this multiple times. If I go back in our Unity editor, and if I run our game now, we are going to see first that our power is equal to 100, and now our power is equal to 56. And this is how we can manipulate the private variables. Our get power is simply going to return the power. So it's simply going to return the current value of this power variable. Set power will change that value with the provided argument. The same way we can do for our health and for our string, except for our string, we are going to pass here a string, set here a string, and here we are going to return an integer. And this is what means data encapsulation. If our variables are private, we cannot access them outside of the class that they are declared. So outside of the player class, we cannot access the private variables. We need to create getters and setters in order to access the private variables that are in this class. So in our case, we have created set power and get power. And we name these getters and setters like this. So our variable is power. We will name set power to set that variable or change and manipulate the value. And we name it get power in order to get or see the value of that variable. For our health, it will be set health and get health. For the name, it will be set name and get name in that way. The same way as we have created here our getters and setters for the power, we can create for the health and for the string, except for the string here, it will be a string instead of an integer. And here we would return a string instead of an integer. So the concept is the same. This dot power here, it will be this dot health is equal to health that we provide here. This dot name would be equal to name that we provide here and return this dot health and return this dot name. So the concept is the same. And this is called data encapsulation because we already saw that we cannot access these variables, these right here. When they are private, we cannot access them inside of this class, which is called my script. For that, we need to use these functions. And these functions can also be private. So instead of public, we can also type these to be private, but you would put public or excuse me, the functions to be private. If you only want to access them inside of this class, if a specific function is only needed inside of this class, then you can put it to be private instead of public. In short, this was about data encapsulation. So nothing hard, nothing complicated simply typing these getters and setters to get and manipulate these variables that are private. And we will see this in action again. Don't worry. We will see all of this in our game development when we start creating our game. So if it's not crystal clear now, don't worry, please. I'm repeating this every time we will cover this multiple times during our game development.